Sometimes, when you meet the perfect man... Just think about it. You are willing to be the other woman. I'm married, you know that. Meet a mistress, more than a lover, but less than a wife. How can you do this to us? I think you'd like to have us both. Get out of it while you can. Three lives and all they love on a collision course. You just have to give me some time. Julianne Phillips, Robert Urich, and Linda Kelsey in His Mistress. Unless you have a supply of air stick bag in your purse. You nervous? Yeah. Yes, I am. Come on. bags in that purse. Mm. I forgot to tell you. Roger called. That's because Roger is so forgettable. I think he could take a hint. Roger, I never want to see you again is more than a hint. Does that mean I can have one? <laughs> take him, he's yours. <laughs> Oh, oops again. You're unlucky to have a mother who bothers to take cooking lessons. I was just kidding, Daddy. Sorry, darling. I'm just feeling old and grumpy this morning. Oh, well, don't be silly. Yeah, Dad. Leave being silly to Gene. Yeah. You still look like a movie star to me. I want to give you the job, Ann. Your college record is great, and your interview is the best of the lot. But every other applicant has been an executive secretary for at least five years. You've only been in the secretarial pool for how long? Almost three years. Experience is what matters to management when it comes to filling this kind of executive assistant job. Help me out. Give me the ammunition I need to convince them. Tell me why you think I should pass over the others and hire you. With all respect to the others, I don't believe that being a good secretary for five years automatically means you're going to be a good executive. 
Most secretaries aren't allowed to make decisions beyond the point of what kind of rubber bands to buy. After a while, they stop trying to assume any authority because their bosses don't really want them to. They want them to buy rubber bands. Is that personal experience? Yes. If I were you, I wouldn't want an assistant who merely fulfilled her boss's orders. I'd want someone who could make decisions on her own and be responsible for them. Now I can do that better than anyone else. I'll have hell to pay for this. You've got the job. Thank you. You won't regret it, I promise. So just drive on down there and take care of Just the man I want to see. Ah, Ann Davis, meet Tom Goodman. Thomas D. Goodman of Goodman Pierce, Goodman? our general counsel. This is Mike White. Mr. White. Hi, how are you? He's our vice president of sales. And this is Alan Beck who needs no introduction. Mr. Beck? Uh, gentlemen, meet my new executive assistant. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, listen, how about a game of racquetball during lunchtime? There's uh, something I want to talk to you about. Sure. Uh, it was nice meeting you all. Nice meeting you. I'm going down too, Miss Davis. Out, but I got plans of my own. What plans? I'm bringing my assistant. So bring her. I don't blame her. She's got a great body. Just arrive with Paul and fly back with her. That's all I ask. Look, Jeff, uh, I hate to be crass, but I know Alan's looking for someone to take Mike White's spot. I'd like to tell him I think you're his man. Shame for that job to go to someone less qualified, more cooperative. Okay, no escorting. Never threw yeah. it for cocktail. Are you all right, honey? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. Just a little tired. This is one time I'm glad to be handing him over. I think it's male menopause. Oh, please. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Take care of him. I'll keep my eye out for hot flashes. Lily, and you too? <laughs> oh, Mr. Beck. Uh, I want to show you. Mr. Tanaka will be at the conference. And Sorry, I'm late. Davis, this is Paula Schuster. Hi. Hi. 
Uh, Paul is a friend of mine. She'll be flying with us. Uh, that'll be fine. Thank you. Mind if I sit here for a while? No. What's it about? Torts. Torts? As in cooking? <laughs> no, as in law. Oh. What's it for? Uh, I'm taking a night class at UCLA Extension. You're smart to get something to fall back on. Protect your assets, I always say. Gravy train isn't going to last forever, right? <laughs> I beg your pardon? I mean, take me. It's been five years already. It's a long time in our business, isn't it? You've known Mr. Perkins for five years? Oh, no, I hardly know Jeff. Aren't you Jeff's girl? No, I'm his assistant. Oh, I thought you... I'm sorry. It's pretty hard to keep track of, well, who's who sometimes. Who are you? Well... You could say I'm part of the entertainment. Uh... I really should go and study. <laughs> Excuse me. that kind of reading on her spare time. Well, um... I know how important uh, a law background is in a business career. Well, I just... I, I wanted to uh, welcome you personally. And, uh... Um, I'm a little rusty, but if you need any help... Thank you. Okay. So we have materials, equipment, labor, and contingencies. Gentlemen, I think these figures speak for themselves. Beck Industries is confident that construction can be completed within the time constraint and budget considerations you've proposed for this plant. We don't think you'll find any other firm that can meet all of these requirements, and we know none can match our quality. things get started. <laughs> Company folklore. Well, the truth is, my mother was an alcoholic, and uh, I spent a lot of time in foster homes while she was drying out. I don't know. Things are tougher sometimes. A guy works a little harder to make things happen. If it hadn't been for that, there might not have been a Beck Industries. I know what you mean. My father never accomplished anything, and uh, it makes me want it all the more. Yeah. 
This looks sweeter. Sure you can. I'll teach you. Come on. Hey, how always don't do the hula. I was born to hula. <laughs> no thanks. I'd like to dance. <laughs> Got an early flight in the morning. I think I'll do the same. I'll walk you to your bungalow. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night, Alan. See you later. Hey, Paula. I'm really from Spokane. Hi, right, Tom Goodman. <laughs> Did you have a good time? A little plastic. Yeah, I know what you mean. Everything seems that way to me these days. How does your family feel about that? Oh. I just haven't felt like I've been able to talk to my family about it. I understand. You know, sometimes it's easier to tell a stranger how you really feel. Yeah. You know, you reminded me of myself when I was your age. Very serious, very determined, very honest. You still seem that way. You like that in a person?
Miss Davis has a few questions about our law course, and uh, I've offered to help her. Would you mind trading places so that we can talk in a way? Not at all. Not at all. Big girl. And I know things happen, they don't have to mean anything beyond the moment. I've never cheated on my wife before. You don't believe me. I do believe you. I'm sorry. Maybe we should just forget it ever happened. When I woke up this morning, I saw you lying next to me. I knew I didn't want it to end with last night. I knew I had to see you again. I made myself a promise I'd never get involved with a married man. And I made a promise I would never see anyone. First priority. I put Mandel on hold to the 15th. If he can't get to it by then, I'll just turn it over to Chapman. Since when do you have the authority to give my business away? <laughs> Those were your instructions. Any overflow is to go to Chapman. Overflow means when you can't take care of it. Can't you handle Mandel? Isn't that what I hired you for? I'd be glad to take care of it. You know, not everybody around here considers you just another pretty face, Miss Davis. What happened to Ann? Ann is for the woman who was my assistant. Ms. Davis is for the woman who was seeing Alan Beck. I'll, um, I'll get rid of the man's account. Excuse me. Thank you. <coughs> I'm telling you, it's special. A couple times on the couch after work and you're saying it's special. You're just feeling guilty, that's well, all. Well, sure I am, but that's nothing to do with the fact that I really care about her. What are you saying? You're in love with this girl? Yeah, I think so. Oh, I don't know. Well, I wouldn't go confusing sex with love just because you've never done this before. Look, Alan, you don't have to justify wanting to sleep I'm with her. I'm not trying to justify anything. Oh, maybe I am. I don't know. I don't know what I'm feeling. What do I do? I live with her. You crazy and leave Catherine and the kids? I didn't say anything about leaving, did I? Put her up in one of the condos, spend more time with her, find out what you're feeling. Like you've been doing with Paula for the last five years. Nah, that's not the same. I never set her up because I thought I was in love with her. And Paula knows that. It's a business deal. To tell you the truth, Alan, I don't think I've ever been in love. Now, before we get down to business, I am very pleased to announce two promotions. Mike White is our new Senior Vice President of Sales. He'll be overseeing all of our operations on the West Coast. Congratulations, Mike. <laughs> Jeff Perkins will be taking Mike's place as Vice President of Sales, and we're looking forward to a lot of great things from Jeff. Congratulations, Jeff. I haven't decided who will be taking Jeff's place, but I'll be making that announcement sometime before Thanksgiving. I know I can speak for all of us, sir, in congratulating you, too, on winning the City of Charity Humanitarian of the Year Award. Yeah. Well, Mike, you already have a promotion, so... Uh... <laughs> Besides, you know how it is, you get on a few committees and they make you some kind of hero. Oh, I don't think raising $15 million for the building of a new wing for the Meyer Clinic is just being on a few committees.
Hello, Mr. Beck. Hello. May I help you? Uh, yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Miss Davis is going to uh, help me pick out a few things for my daughter. They're the same size. Did you have anything particular in mind? Well, uh, why don't we start over here? Please. I don't know about this, Alan. It just doesn't feel right. Would you feel funny about buying me a small gift you could afford? Of course not. Well, the bottom line is I could more than afford this. And I want to do it. So please don't deny me, okay? I guess my bottom line is... Thank you. place before I left for work this morning. Honestly, Susan must have come home for lunch. She's a, a terrific girl, but she's such a slob. I'm sorry. For what? This place. It's not so bad. I just don't feel comfortable here. What about tonight? Where? I have an idea. Just leave it up to me. Pick you up for dinner at 7.30. your car when Jeff Perkins' secretary came by. She told me that you'd gone home sick. But I didn't tell her that I was standing right next to your car. I didn't want you to get in trouble or anything. Where were you? I, I was sick. I got so sick I had to take a cab home. You don't look sick. I feel a lot better. Whatever it was passed in a couple of hours. I was just getting ready to go out. With who? A guy I met. You didn't tell me about any guy. Who is it? The, uh, taxi cab driver. You're kidding! Oh, we have a lot in common with the law students, so... Huh. Boy, I thought you said you were going to concentrate on your career.
want you to move in here. No, Helen, no. No, hey, just listen. I, I think we need to know more about each other, to find out how we really feel. And you living here would give us a chance to do that. I'm afraid. This place just sits here empty. It was the model for the entire complex. Now it's mine. Do with as I please. And what would please me more than anything is for us to be together. You just think about it. Isn't it? Oh, this is Disneyland. Better. Looks like I could learn something from you. Yeah. I have to write a book on how to find the perfect house sitting job. I'd buy it. I'll come by later and show you around. Nice meeting you, Susan. Nice to meet you. Thanks for all your help. I met her on the airplane to Hawaii. What does she do? Uh, I don't know. They all look 50 before they're 30. You won't catch me doing that. Well, don't you want to have a tan? Sure. When I do, nothing but UVA rays touch this precious body. But aren't those salons expensive? Uh, that's not my problem. And that time makes me sick. I get off the train from Podunk, thinking they're going to be a starlet. And ten years later, they all end up like that. Pushing 35 and strung out on having somebody pay their way. No self-esteem left, just desperation. Pretending it's still the way it was when they were 18. It's pathetic. You won't catch me kidding myself like that. If you're smart, you won't either. I'm smart about what? Your relationship with Mr. Beck. Don't worry, Mr. Goodman told me all about it. Look, I don't know what Mr. Goodman told you, but well, what's to tell? Here you are, all moved in, and you sure can't afford this place on an executive assistant salary. This is just so Alan and I can spend some time together. <sighs> don't mind me, I'm just jealous. I wanted the penthouse. You know, I do work for a living. Don't we all? <laughs> Listen, if you ever get lonely, we could have lunch or something. Just yell. Maybe. Sometime. Okay. Sometime. Paula, I want to thank you for not saying anything to my friend Susan. No problem. I've been there myself.
did an incredible job on the Mandela account. Absolutely incredible. Thank you. Peace? I wouldn't touch that one. <laughs> but I am going to recommend to your friend that I give you my old job. Don't be ridiculous. It's not ridiculous. You can do it, whether you believe it or not. The only thing is, he probably won't give it to you. Wouldn't look right. idea, not mine. <clears throat> Trust me, it wouldn't look right. People are talking. Look, Alan, I'm way the hell downtown. I'm hearing about it. Everyone in your place suspects. If I were you, I'd get her out of there. Get her something better. Send her to school. They all want to go to art school. You know, sometimes I wonder why I stay friends with you. Because I'm honest. The best to turn you around. Hey, what about that law school bit, huh? She would like to go to law school full time. There you go. You'll be doing her a favor. No harm, no foul. You have to leave already? Uh, we're having people over for dinner. I'm sorry we don't have more time together, but by the time you can leave work, I only have about an hour leeway. I knew it'd be like this. I can handle it. Can you also handle that I've got to go out of town tomorrow for a week? Sure. And you're a lot stronger than I am. on the pink slip. How can you be so calculating about it? It's a business arrangement first, a relationship second. I don't mean to sound so cold, but you can't afford to forget the long run ever. But I don't want anything from Alan except for his love. I know that may sound corny to you, but it's just the way I feel. It's not corny. It's naive. I don't mean to pry. Well, that's not true. I love to pry. What I mean is, you can tell me to buzz off if you don't want to talk about it. I do want to talk about it. You're the only person on earth I can talk to about it. No one else knows. It's just that my moving into the condo was supposed to allow us more time together. It has, sort of. Just that you want more. I guess I do. Like Thanksgiving, for instance. Exactly. That's a part of it that doesn't change. Whether it's love or business arrangements, they don't leave their wives. Remember that. I haven't thought that far. Really. Now, the holidays are the worst. You'll feel better in January. What are you doing for Thanksgiving? Nothing. Well, you want to come to my parents with me? <laughs> Why not? I just love parents. They're not mine. <laughs> well, I think Finish the rest of it. Hey, hold on. Sure smells good. good. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this food, and we ask your blessing. Amen. How's your boyfriend? Thank you. Lots of my boyfriend. Sure. sure. You want some? No. Are you sure? I love you. No. I'm 
Excuse me, I almost forgot. I've got to make a quick phone call. Now? It's, uh, just take a second. Sorry, excuse me, honey. What are you doing for me? Uh, I'll get it. Hello? Hi. Actually, uh, you Yeah. I miss you. I miss you too. I wish we could be together. But, uh, look, next weekend I'm going to take you away, just the two of us, just for fun, okay? Sounds wonderful. Happy Thanksgiving. I love you. I'll send you to law school. In three years, you come out and enter the business world at a much higher level than you could ever achieve by just inching your way along. Especially at Beck Industries. You can't exactly promote me very freely now, can you? That's why you have to let me do this for you. It's the only way I can make it up to you. Alan, you'd be supporting me. It's insignificant. A gesture that has nothing to do with our relationship. Besides, I have my own very selfish motives. I mean, I get to see you more often. Well, your schedule at school would be a lot more flexible than punching a time clock for that tyrant you work for now. No, you're wrong about Mr. Beck. It's the kindest, most sensitive. Most loving man I've ever met. I was talking about Mr. Perkins. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> For me, too. He's doing this for me. Sure. Boy, are you in over your head. I don't have to listen to this. But you should. For your own good. Look, Jeff. I'm not going to stand here and argue with you. Not after all you've done for me. And Get out of it while you can. following these messages. Robert Urich, Cynthia Sykes, and Mark Shera. There you are. Everything you need to know about transcripts, letters of recommendation, and your own personal statement is in the instruction bulletin. Is it too late to apply for spring? You put the deadlines only 10 days away. You better hurry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> when do you start? Not until spring, hopefully. Then you can spare the afternoon to have lunch with a friend. I really shouldn't. We'll spend the whole time discussing law. I promise. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 
See that girl over there? Notice how she hasn't touched her food? Look at her glass of champagne. Full. What does that say to you? Probably that she's not hungry. It's a test. Before she'll get involved with the guy, she goes to lunch with him. Then she orders the most expensive entree and champagne on the menu. Then she doesn't touch them. If the guy says anything about it being a waste of money, that is the end of him. Did you do that with Tom? I didn't have to. We both knew what we wanted. Without the games. You really don't love him at all. I said I didn't. I'm in this for what I can get. Must be a lot. You bet. Every birthday and Valentine's Day, I make sure I get a little piece in one of Mr. Goodman's investments. I already get monthly checks from a gas station in Tustin, shopping center in Rosemead, and an apartment complex in Oxnard. And those are forever. You know, I'm curious. Did you ever want to do anything with your life before you met Mr. Goodman? Promise not to tell? Promise. Be an architect. What happened? Well, I made straight A's in high school, but when I hit that university calculus course, <laughs> I was just fighting to get through. Then I met Mr. Farley. That lasted four years. Eventually, I met Mr. Goodman. What do you do with your time? Oh, I read a lot. Take care of myself. You could use an overhaul yourself. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Spend the day with me tomorrow. I promise you, you will be a new woman by 6 o'clock tomorrow night. avoiding it. Christmas, New Year's, the whole holiday thing. Oh, I know I won't be with you, so let's just not talk about it, okay? Do you know I'll be just as disappointed as you? Hmm? Tell me what you'll be doing. Tell me who you'll see. I want to know that you'll be busy and occupied. Well, I'm going to go see my friend Susan. Yeah. Then I'm going to go to my parents. Mm. It'll be fun. I'll be thinking. 
thinking of you every minute. Really? I kind of miss it. <laughs> I got on that, you'd be quiet. And you don't have to lie to me anymore. What do you mean? I know. Everyone knows that you're seeing Alan Beck. Why'd you feel that you had to lie to me? I didn't think you'd understand. Maybe I don't, but I'm your friend and I want to. I'm sorry I lied. I don't like it any more than you do. Come on, friend. We've got so much to catch up on. to 
thought everybody was asleep. I had to see you. So have a good time with your folks. Mm. You? No, nothing special. Nothing very festive. That's not true. You're lying to me, Alan. I saw you. I was there. What are you talking about? You were there. I stopped by your house on the way home from my parents. I guess you could call it spying. I know it was wrong. Oh, it wasn't. Alan, yes, it was wrong. This whole thing is wrong. I can't take this line anymore. Like I said, I love parents, if they're not mine. <laughs> if you don't like your family, then why go see them? For Mr. Goodman. So he can do his family gig without feeling guilty. I think I know what you mean. Paula, why do you always call him Mr. Goodman? That's easy, because he's my boss. I don't know what's wrong with me. All of a sudden, I can't be happy without him. Not all of a sudden. You've been letting yourself get more and more dependent on him. You're right. I guess things will change once I start school. But that's four months from now. That's if I'm lucky. What happens if I don't get accepted anywhere? Listen, Anne. If you're gonna go on with this, you've gotta protect yourself. At least emotionally. You mean be more like you? Yes. That's just what I mean. And how do I go about doing that? You've got to balance the scales. I'm not sure I know how to do that, Paula. Then I'll show you.
join you. Why not? In fact, we need Marcy. Uh, we need Marcy, too. You gotta go, you gotta go. Paul, come on, let's go home, okay? This just isn't my style. You're right. This place is getting old. Let's go. I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. <laughs> Is this a joke? They're coming to our New Year's Eve party. Well, what about? I want you there, Ann. No more standing on the sideline. I've arranged for Jeff Perkins to bring you. Ann? Yes. Is there anything wrong with that? No, that's fine. <laughs> What's the bad news? I can't make it tonight. Uh, Catherine bought some theater tickets as a surprise. And I understand. I love you. I love you too. Dressed up and no place to go. Well, come on in. I hope you get a poker. Oh, terrible. <laughs> That's even better. Anne? This is Lauren, Nancy. Hi. 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 Fellow holiday orphans. I think you could use one of Paula's specials. I'll fix you right up. They're all jerks. And what does that make us? Jerkettes? Yeah. Come on, I'm serious. Don't be. Look at us. Here we are all alone while they are off with the wife and kitties. The same wife and kitties are always complaining about to us. I didn't see any bars on your door, hon. I'll raise. Don't forget, we don't have to change those kitties' diapers either. Well... I wouldn't mind changing a few diapers. Are we playing poker or having group therapy, huh? That must be the male stripper I ordered. <laughs> Very cute, Paula. <laughs> This guy says he has the authority to repossess your car, Miss Schuster. How does he 
Just thought we'd better check with you. We possess? That's ridiculous. My lease was just renewed. There must be a mistake somewhere. There's no mistake. The lease was up yesterday, and there has been no renewal. We need the car back. We can't just wait until tomorrow. There's no way I can straighten it out tonight. The man... The person that leases the car from me can't be reached till then. Lady, this person is the one who wouldn't renew. I need the keys. Now. Never liked the color anyway. Mrs. Goodman, Mrs. Beck, this is Ann Davis, my former assistant. A pleasure. I want to thank you for having me to your lovely home this evening. Oh. You're very welcome. May I uh, offer you some champagne? Or... Oh, no, uh, no, as a matter of fact, we were just headed for the bar. Excuse us. Excuse me. I don't want to say I told you so. I don't. Look, I care about you. I can't stand to see you get caught up in this dead end game. It's not a game, Jeff. He's going to leave her. You believe that? Yes. And you're more naive than I thought. It really bothers you that I'm in love with him, doesn't what it? What bothers me is seeing you let yourself be turned into a high class whore. Let me tell you something, Jeff. If I'm a whore, that makes you a first rate pimp. Plenty of time to tell me exactly what's going on. But clearly, you have no intention of doing so. Don't 
be a coward, Alan. Talk to me. talk about it yet. I still have to give him no more time. How much time? We promised that we'd never lie to each other, Alan. How can you do this to us? something more, but if I can't have that, I'd like to be your friend. What do you say? I could use the friend right now. All right, then it's settled. Put on something warm, because I'm taking you someplace to get your mind off things. I'm afraid there is no such place. Oh, yes, there is. Right. by any chance. Oh, could be. I want to be sure you can't accuse me of taking you anyplace romantic. <laughs> Boy, are you strung out. Couldn't call from home. Yeah, I'll bet. She's not there, Al. When the hell is she? Off teaching you a lesson, no doubt. Let's play. to question me the hell I don't I've been going crazy all day and you're off Lord knows where Griffith Park Griffith Park with who none of your business it damn well is my business and why is that Alan because you're supporting me I thought that was an insignificant gesture that had nothing to do with our relationship it doesn't but then I have the right to be upset and I have the right to be left alone at this particular moment Consolation prize? A weekend in San Diego? And this is very difficult. I am going to leave her. I... It's just not the right time. Helen, I think it'd be the perfect time. You 
Dan, this is the toughest thing I've ever had to do in my life. Catherine is a wonderful woman. She's been a, a terrific wife and mother for 20 years. 20 years is a long time. So please, give me a chance. I'm going to tell her. Soon. I love you. Why haven't you returned my calls? I uh, think you know why. There's someone else. Younger. <clears throat> Look, uh, Paula, I talked to my accountant. Uh, you've got nothing to worry about. Lease is paid for another six months. All that property. You'll do just fine. Will I? Come on, Paul. I didn't think you were one of those women who'd want a tearful, dramatic farewell scene. We knew what we were doing. This was business for both of us. I always wanted to believe that, too. Till now. Don't. Don't give me any of that, but underneath it all, I really loved you crap. I never wanted that. Never. But it's true. I was afraid that if you knew that you would... Goodbye, Paula. I love you, you bastard. like yourselves in a place where you can relax. Hey, somebody I want you guys to meet, okay? Sweetheart. Ann? Alan? I'd like to meet Megan. Hi. Hi. Where's Paula? Who's Paula? Tom, I don't think we'll be staying. This is not exactly the kind of party we had in mind. Come on, mingle. Enjoy yourselves. Come on, Megan. Let's meet the rest of my friends. I swear I didn't know. How could you be friends with someone like that? And where's Paula? He broke off with her, but that has nothing to do with us. I need, I need time to think. I'm taking a cab. Please don't follow me, Alan. Paula? Sam? 
pan. Paula? Don't ever tell Tom. I won't. You found me? Sorry. No reward. You want to tell me what happened? It was all a lie. Those five years, well, they were saying it was business. Turns out it was for him. But it never was for me. I just... I just couldn't let him know that or anybody else. Because if you had, you would have lost him. And this, I just couldn't handle that he never loved me. I, I could have handled ending, maybe, but... That he never really cared. Be okay. Sure. Yeah. It'll be relief. Look in the mirror every day and I wish I was 18. You really mean that? Really? And I'll more repeat performance. I promise. Well, what will you do? Well, at least has another six months. And I have my investments. I'll be fine. Hey. Remember what I said about protecting your assets? Look, um, I'm gonna go home and change. But I'll be back later. Thanks for everything. I mean that. Get some sleep.
for hours. You were angry with me about last night. No. And we're going to be together, you and me, all the time. You've got to believe me. I, I love you. I need you. Are you sure you know the difference? Sure, maybe you need me at this point in your life. But you don't really love me. At least not enough to marry me. That's not true. You, you just have to give me some time. I, I, I've got to do it my way. What if your way is not to do it at all? You know what I think, Alan? I think you'd like to have us both. I love you and you love me. Isn't that all that matters? Great game. It's a great game when you win. When you lose, it's extremely average. You got news for me, pal. Winners buy the drinks. Uh oh. <laughs> Jeff, look, uh, hate to ask you this again, but you know, I would very much like to have Ed come for the awards banquet, and I know it would mean a lot to her, so. Could you bring her? No, I won't. I don't want to be a part of it anymore, Alan. I think what you're doing to her is wrong. She is not the kind of woman who can live like that. She deserves better. And if it costs me my job to say that, fine. Sorry to feel that way. Jeff. It won't cost you a job. Please don't tell her I ever asked. And so it gives me great pleasure to introduce a man of remarkable accomplishments and enormous heart. The man of the hour, our man of the year, Alan Beck. Check and make sure you didn't forget anything. Susan. I bought you this car. I knew it was a mistake. for loving me. In a way, you've... You've made me think more highly of myself than I ever have in my whole life. You made me feel I deserved more, could do more, could be more. But, Alan, even with all of that, I feel so empty. I never intended for it to be like that. What are you going to do now? 
I'm uh, gonna move back in with Susan. Then I'll ask go full time. Even if I have to work nights to do it. You'll do it. And I know now I... I can't really give you what you really need. You're doing the right thing. So, did he bring the pink slip? <laughs> Are you sure you want to give us all up? setback in the restaurant strike negotiations. Details next. Then Ricky Schroeder plays a practical joke on co-star Alfonso Ribeiro. Then Sophia Loren, her real-life son, and Daniel J. Travanti star in the NBC movie premiere, Aurora. NBC, let's all be there.